Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night. You guys were really watching us in here for you on to the Rokani Media Football. Today we come in here to summarize this Florida Cup final as Arsenal beat Chelsea by four goals to nil. Chelsea have been beaten, trounced by Arsenal in there for you. And obviously, a man who goes by the names of Lokonga coming in with the icing of the cake in the late minutes of the dying game in the for you that goes by the Lokonga with a very good cross brought in by Cedric Soares, one of a perfect cross that I've never seen him really develop in the for you. And remember, he was responsible for that for that corner that really brought in for Gabriel Jesus to score against the side which goes by Everton. He's really so much talented in the for you with his left foot in the for you. So he needs to go in and really co concentrate so much onto those crosses in the for you because each and every time he really gets a time and really concentrates and really brings in a cross it's always perfect and Arsenal really benefits from the cross in there for you so smash the like button comment and share if at all you're watching us for the very first time endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that you do upload in a daily Gabriel Jesus on the score sheet first to score for Arsenal Odegaard scored the second Boca Osaka scored a third that was obviously offside I don't know where the liner was and Sambi Lokonga directing the header to the lower 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 left bottom corner of the goal and it he made it for in the for you and he celebrated and he was really kissing the badge of Arsenal in there for you. So lots of things to talk about in this game of football. All of these sides brought their A team. Let no one lie to you that no one in this game because I'll told you in the match build up that there is no friendly between Arsenal and Chelsea. That's it. It's like Manchester United versus Liverpool. The rival has been here for close to 100 years. You get um, Man City and Manchester United, that's the rivalry. It's like Barcelona and Real Madrid, who are really kicking starting off their game of football in like 40 minutes from now. There is no friendly, guys. It's always a real game. It's always a do or die game. Whether a friendly or what, it's a real game. And I tell you, no friendly between Chelsea and Arsenal. These are teams that don't see eye to eye, especially when it comes to the place where they're coming from. It's called or London. And they've been having a London derby way down in America. It was carried miles and miles away from London and has been taken to America in the for you. And let me tell you this. Arsenal have really won the day. They've been better in everything. They've outclassed a team which goes by the names of Chelsea. Thomas Tuchel's tactics didn't work today. He started with the back four, a midfield pivot, which was double consisting of Garaga and um, Jorginho. Then he had he had uh, Sterling, uh, Kai Havas, Mason Mount, and uh, which other player, and Timo Vanna. But all of those were silenced by Arsenal. The way Arsenal came in to do this job was that go in, use the half spaces that Chelsea is not using, and kill off the game immediately. That's what Arsenal did. And Arsenal was pressing at a high rate. And when you look at how Grant Xhaka and Thomas Partey were pressing that midfield. They were so intense. And that showed you that Arsenal players might be, might have been on a different level altogether. But someone will come in and give me that option. And I will, I, will, I will not buy it. I will not buy it. Reason being, you can tell me that Chelsea has been training since the 5th of July and they are not yet fit. That's out. They've played the two games so far. Arsenal had played four in the for you. But there are even other players of Arsenal that were inter internationals that just returned. Let me read them to you. Ramsdale, Bukayo Saka, mm, William Saliba, Gabio Magales, mm, Grant Xhaka, uh, which other player? Gabio Jesus. Uh, almost six players of Arsenal that started in this team. Plus Martinelli, close to seven players of Arsenal, returned on the same day Chelsea players returned. So, what's the difference? It shows you that Chelsea needs to really go ahead and revise itself in the way because Arsenal is really good and they might be, they are so much fired up. Some of the players at Chelsea are not sure of their future. Secondly, even the manager has not yet gotten in the players he believes like he should be getting. So, I think Chelsea is disorganized, but even if you're disorganized, I think you are having almost the spine of your team. You've already brought in Kauridi Koulibaly. I saw Chaloba play very well. I saw Saab play very well in the Premier League last season. So, no reason to give. Arsenal has beaten Chelsea 4-0. And Arsenal are the champions of the Florida Cup down there in America. And they're flying back to... They're flying back to, to London. And on Sunday, next Sunday, they are playing in the Emirates Cup. They are playing Sevilla. 
and they might really get another triumph in the five years. I know they're really going to put up a very good fight because Sevilla is a very good team, especially when it comes to possessing that ball. But I think Arsenal is really going to put up a fight because they're going to be home and they're going to be playing for the very first time in the season of 2022, 2023 in front of their fans. Expect Arsenal to put up what is so much expected from their fans. Secondly, Mikel Arteta. Mikel Arteta as the manager has finally shown us that this is my second string side. Sorry, this is my second string side and this is my first string side in the four. When you look at how he has really played today, you expect Bramsdale to start in goal, Zinchenko getting a debut playing on the left back, uh, Ben White or Tomiyasu, um, that is the right, the right, the right back. Obviously, William Saliba and um, Gabriel Magalis are going to be the central defenders of Arsenal next season. That's it. That's no, no. There is no question about it because they played very well. Grant Jaka sometimes won't play. I really believe that we are going to see more of uh, Fabio Vieira and Odegaard in that midfield in there for you because Patek can play single pivot because I think there are teams that don't require to be having a, a double pivot. A single pivot can be enough to see to it that you really go through them and really win the game of football, especially when you really need to get that win early enough. Then Bukayo Saka, Martinelli, and the player who goes by the name of Gabriel Jesus to lead the line in the free. So I think we expect a team like that from a side which goes by the name of Arsenal next season because it has now taken shape. And you've seen it that when they really get into levels of, of what the manager wants them to do, they really react Positively. Even when he brought on the second swing side that had Midland Nails, mm, Pepe, Nketia, Maquinos, um, and very many others, they really looked a threat. Remember, after scoring the third goal, that's when whole some changes were made. And Thomas Pato was taken off. El Nini came in through. Midland Nails came in through to play the double midfield pivot with with um, with a. Uh, El Nini either for you. So Arsenal has really gone ahead to outboss Chelsea. Chelsea looked like they're not a team to come in and but I was talking to a friend after the first half when Arsenal had really taken almost consumed everything from the game in the first half. I told him that I'm only waiting for these players to come in through. Kovacic, Marcus Alonso, and Aspliqueta. If Chelsea failed to break down Arsenal, I'm rating off Chelsea because these two players I'm talking about. Are really so much fundamental in the way Chelsea plays. That is Aspliqueta, Kovacic, <coughs> and Marcos Alonso. When they came in through, they tried to put up an intensity that really threatened Arsenal to go back and play a deep line. But Arsenal had a lot of defensive discipline. The way they really put Chelsea out of this game, they for the first like 20 minutes of the second half, they let Chelsea have the ball. They, they, they let Chelsea to have the ball. Chelsea had the ball for like 20 minutes and they could use nothing from that ball that's it they are not threatening at all can you imagine and Arsenal was saying all right we are, we are two goals ahead we have no reason for attacking you it's you who need to get a result come and attack us come and attack us that's what Arsenal were doing and what Arsenal did was to get them on the break and then hit them in there for you with the Bokayo Saka goal that was offside and that of Lokonga in there for you when you look at Lokonga's goal you really get to know that the defense, the defending of Chelsea was abysmal. It was really abysmal. It's something that you cannot really come out and talk about in here and explain because how can Lokonga get a free header like that when a person who was really crossing that ball from the right even took his time and then raised his eyes and they knew where he was really going to lay that ball either for you. He crossed that ball and it found um, the guy is called who? Sambi Lokonga, unmarked. And he headed it into the back of the net. Chelsea ashamefully lose to Arsenal. Obviously, they've lost to Arsenal ashamefully either for you, but their efforts of players you won't really undermine. I told you that man Odegaard, he is the reason as to why Arsenal is winning these games. The way he really controls the midfield, he makes you believe that it's easy to play the game of football. He's in the midfield, he feels okay, he expresses himself, and I think giving him that captain Amban is going to really enforce him and really force him to go ahead and really get us more and more and more of him that we hadn't seen. Obviously, I told people that Odegaard is really a player that we haven't seen in the Premier League. What you saw last season, that's not Odegaard. That's not his pick. 
he's not he has not even played a quarter of the football he has wait for Odegaard he's going to come in all strong and I think with the coming in of Gabriel Jesus he's really going to be having a lot of firepower because Gabriel Jesus is a player who does not really let you take the fire off every time he's telling get me that ball he tries to push you either way because he's coming from a team that has been winning game in game out that is Gabriel Jesus so Odegaard is really key to this game but my worry for Arsenal is for Thomas Partey and Gabriel Magales Thomas Partey is really a player at Arsenal he's unique he's the only player that can play that pivot you get they have no player who can play that pivot I really believe that they should go in for CDM especially Tillemans anyone who can come in and really play that role in the field because you can't trust Thomas Partey with your season obviously he's an injury prone player and you can't really trust El Nini to come in and really give you 10 games of consistency. He can come he can come in and play for you five good games like he did at the end of the season. Those six games that he can get the he can get you those six games. But are you sure he can really play 10 games consistently when Arsenal is really not thinking even of the absentia of Thomas Partey? That's the big question. That's the big question. So Arsenal have won this game of football very well. Zinchenko looking like he has been with Arsenal for like a year plus. And the way Mikel told him to play was so much good that don't, don't narrow the pitch. Widen the pitch into the wide area and let Martinelli cut inside into, into the half spaces. And that's where Martinelli operated so much into that field of play. And when you look at how the go first goal came in through, it shows you the press of Arsenal and the high line. When you're having Saliba and Gabio Magales, the high line... <coughs> Sorry about that. When they're having Saliba and Magales, the high line is so much good and so much considered strong. That's why you see that they were the, they were playing at the center line, and then the likes of Pate and Jaka were pressing almost near the 18 yards box area of a side which goes by the names of Chelsea. And that's how really they pressed and Jaka played that pass to Gabio Jesus, and Gabio Jesus really chipped that ball over the goalkeeper into the back of the net. The skill was so immense. It was really so much good. And it shows you how good Arsenal is having into that lad. He's really a proven center forward. He's really a proven center forward. And the way Martinelli Gabriel really created the second goal for Arsenal. It shows you that no one was reading the round of Odegaard. And they gave Martinelli time to make a 360 turn on the ball to again grant him a chance to face their goal. That's it. Because Martinelli was facing the goal of Chelsea. Then he turned around. He made a 360 turn. Then he played into Odegaard. Odegaard found that ball and he hit it into the back of the net. Chelsea, we are not in the game today. And credit has to go to Mikel Ateta because he read Chelsea like a book. And by the way, I'm not surprised of him beating Chelsea because even in the game they played at Stamford Bridge last season where Anketia scored a brace, <laughs> it was Arsenal that really edged out Chelsea. And moreover, with um, El Nini and Xhaka in the midfield, that's how they really edged them out. They never had the, the likes of Gabi Jesus. They never had William Saliba, you get? But they came in here and really bossed a side which goes by the names of Chelsea and they beat it totally in that game of football in their you. So I 100% believe that Chelsea... We are beaten, salary, they are flawed by Arsenal. In English, that's what we call a trounce. Arsenal trounce Chelsea by four goals to nil. So, Thomas Tuko needs to revise his tactics. Till now, I've seen people praise Thomas Tuko, but I think Thomas Tuko might be so good in these knockout stages, like knockout competitions, but in the league, he might not be good, as certain people think. I think he lacks notes to really take on a strong run into the league. I really believe that. So we expect a lot of things to happen into the Chelsea side. I think, was this their last game? Let me check and see. Chelsea. <laughs> All right. Chelsea are playing with Denise. They are playing with Denise on 29th July. <laughs> That's it. 29th, I think they will be. Will, will they be in America? Let me check. Will they be in America or they will be now? They'll be in London. 
Mm, they're going to be in Italy. They're going to play Udinese in Italy on the 29th of on the 29th of of this month. <laughs> that's one thing. That's next next Friday. Next Friday they are playing Udinese. That means they are flying out of America and they are getting back to a side which goes by names of Italy. And I, and I think they are going back to London. Then after London they'll go to Italy. Then from Italy they fly back to a side which goes by the names of London to prepare for their game against Everton that they're opening up within the four years. But they've been beaten. They've been battered by Arsenal and Arsenal have really taken this trophy and have seen Rivaldo reuniting with uh, with uh, Gabriel Gabriel Jesus, giving him the accolade of the man of the match. Obviously, he deserved it because he really put up a very spirited fight into the first half. He played close to 60 minutes of the game. I think Arsenal have now picked the levels of the Premier League and they're going to start on a high. I don't believe that. That statistic that is standing in between Arsenal and Crystal Palace, that the last time they met, the last eight times they met, Arsenal has only beaten Crystal Palace once, is going to really put in a block to stop a side like Crystal Palace. Sorry, to stop a side like Arsenal beating Crystal Palace. Arsenal is the most stronger side with the likes of William Saliba and Gabriel Magalis. They are having two towering lads into the central defense. Oh my God. I think Arsenal is really going to register more clean sheets this season. More even because I think Saliba comes in and displaces Benny White. Saliba is really good. He's really good. Agblenoha, I now agree with you. Saliba is really a talent and he's better than Ben White. I agree with you. But one thing Ben White has that Saliba doesn't have, he's passing accuracy and runs that he really makes from the back four. That's it. The way he's comfortable on the ball and his progressive passing in the for you is really great, especially in the half of the opponent. He comes through, reaches the center side, and he passes through the central axis. So Ben White has an eye for a good pass from the central defense. But I will believe that those with the time, um, William Saliba will really go ahead and really improve onto that. That's what I had for you. That for you, tell me what you think about Arsenal 4, Chelsea 0. Guys, allow me sleep. We've had a very long day. You know that. And finally, let's call it a day. And let's see to it that tomorrow we'll wake up and really give you the best that you guys deserve onto this channel, which goes by names of Rokan Media Football. But Arsenal 4, Chelsea 0. I've see, I remember, by the way, people in the prediction, by the way, coming and telling me, Arsenal 4, Chelsea 2, Arsenal 3, Chelsea 0. I thought Chelsea would put up a fight, but they couldn't. They couldn't. Arsenal was so strong. Arsenal was so strong, and they stood up to really humiliate Chelsea in America. That is Orlando, and Arsenal have beaten Chelsea by four goals to nil. Thank you guys for watching in. I sign out for now. See you later, mates. Rokan David is my name. Rokan Media Football is the channel.